Welcome everyone to this new tutorial, I'm Erwan from Motion VFX. During this video, we'll see some tips and tricks using blend modes to create some cool integration between stock footage and 3D text. And also, we'll see how to create a nice burning effect like this one. First thing first, I will create a new project. I will name it Ignition Project. Then I need a 3D text, so by pressing Ctrl plus T, I will get a basic 2D text. In the inspector, I will modify the text, change the font, and increase the size. I will center it. I will activate the 3D parameters and play with the depth value. I will apply a wood texture and adjust the position of the texture with the plasma parameter. You can apply the texture to the object or on each letter. In this case, I will apply one texture for all the objects to avoid to repeat the pattern between each letters. I will change the lighting style and select the diagonal right. Okay, so now we have a 3D text. Let's add the combustion background. To do so, I will use some stock footage. To manage all my stock footage, audio and video, I've created a dedicated library for Final Cut Pro 10 called stock footage. I can open it at any time. As you can see, it's organized by type, audio, graphics, and video. With a keyword, it's really easy to find the right element very quickly. In the audio folder, I've built my own sounds library with multiple audio files that I've selected, like this one, or this one, or I can listen footstep, rain, or the whoosh effect for a transition. In the graphics folder, I've got two packs from Motion VFX, mform and mzap. That can be very useful to add some animation to other projects. And I've got a video folder where I can find all my stuff footage video with many packs from Motion VFX like M Anamorphics, the M Background Collection with Ferrofluid, Ink, Oil, and the last one, Water Bubbles. With some other packs like Mfire 4K, I've kept the PDF file provided by Motion VFX so I can quickly see all the elements with the right name directly inside my library. So if you didn't know that Motion VFX provide many stock footage and compositing elements besides plugins, I invite you to visit motionvfx.com and look at all the collection of the footage available. So let's find some elements for our project. I will go to the M background combustion library where I can find a really nice background. For my title effect, I would like a combustion motion from the right to the left. So I will get this one with the number 29. And I will mix the second one to add more sparks. So I will drag and drop the number 14 on the top of my first footage. I will adjust the duration. In the inspector, I will change the blend mode from normal to add or screen. I will select both elements and create a compound clip. I will name it background BG compound clip, like this. For this project, I will create a lot of compound clips. So to help me to find all the compound clips at once, here a little tip I'm using all the time. In the library, you will find by default Smart Collection. Smart Collection are dedicated filters where Final Cut Pro 10 displays specific elements, for example, project, stills, or audio. But the cool thing is the fact that you can create your own smart collection just with a right click. I will name it Compound Clip. Then I will double click on it. A new window opens. I will use it to define what I would like to see inside this smart collection. I will click on the plus icon and select Type. In the pop-up menu, I will have many options like Audition, Synchronize Clip, Compound, 
So I will select compound. And now all the compound clip I will create it or have already created will appear inside this collection. So you don't have to add compound clip anymore inside the name and you can get shorter name. Now I've got my background and I've got my 3D title. For the purpose of the project and the tutorial, I will copy both in order to simplify the workflow. So if I want to mix the background with the title, I will have to put one on the top of the other. I will adjust the duration of the text. And in order to see the title, I will need to modify the type of blend mode in the inspector. Like before, I can switch to the add mode and my title is back. I can adjust the size inside the viewer to get close to the title. The add mode is working well and it's mixing the highlights of both elements. But in some parts, it's creating some transparency effects with the text. It looks like I've played with the opacity of the text. We can change the order of the elements, but the result is the same. So I will keep this example and copy both elements just after. With the copy, I will change the blend mode to Silhouette Luma. What it does, it will take the highlights of the combustion elements and add it to the alpha of the 3D text. I can switch to the alpha view to see the result. So the black parts are transparent and the white are opaque. So I can use this effect as a new text element. And to keep it simple, I will select both and create a new compound clip. Now I can get the background element and add it below my 3D title. And we can see that we have a better integration now, as we don't have this transparency effect anymore with the text. I can compare both effects and check that we have a more solid text and less glow from the background. So I don't need any more of these two elements. And now I would like to create the burn effect with the wood texture. To do so, I would drag my background element and put it on the top of the original title. I will deactivate the background to see the 3D title. I will select it and go to the inspector. In the 3D text parameters, I will modify the texture and select the burn wood, like this one. I will bring back my combustion layer and redo the same operation we've done by selecting the Silhouette Luma Blend Mode. It is more difficult to see the result with a burn wood texture, so I can switch to the alpha view to check it. I will select both elements and create a new compound clip and name it Text Burn Alpha. Now I can insert the element between my text and my background layer. I will deactivate the top layer text in order to see the burn wood effect. To create the transition between the two textures, I will add multiple masks. So I will open the effects library, go to the mask folder, and add the draw mask effects on my top title. I will start on the right side and try to follow the motion of the sparks and the flame. I will invert the mask. And now, by animating the mask, I will reveal the burn title. To smooth the transition, I will add some feather and adjust the fall-off parameter.
In order to animate the shape, I will add one keyframe on the global control points parameter and start to animate the mask on several frames. I will add many masks as the transition will come from several parts. So I'm done with the mask animations. I will select all the elements and create a new compound clip. I will name it Ignition Mask Animation. And I can check the result. In the library, I can see that I've got four compound clips available in my smart collection. This four elements represent the first step of my effect. But I would like to go further with my effect and add more elements to complete the integration between my title and the background. To do so, I will go back to my stock footage library and select some elements from the Mfire 4K collections. The first ones are really nice as they are following different shapes. And this one is perfect to place on the top of the whole letter. So I will drag and drop on the top of my compound clip. I will put it at the right timing. Then I will need to change the scale, the position. For a smooth revealing, don't hesitate to use a background element with a sparks, for example, and use a short dissolve. I will add a mask to remove some parts of the footage which doesn't match with my element. So I can repeat this task many times to add more elements over my title. I will add also some dust particles with a dust 4K bundle and some smoke also. I've got my different elements. For the smoke, I need to do a color correction. For the fire elements, I will also need to do some color correction to match with the background and the title. So I will select all the fire elements and create a new compound clip in order to add only one color correction. I will name it Fire. Change the blend mode to Screen. Adjust the color. But also I will add a little touch of Gaussian Blur to break the sharpness of the 4K elements. I'm done with the color correction for the fire elements, so now I can select all the elements and create a new compound clip again. I will name it Pre-Grade. To polish the result and add some style to my shot, I will apply MFM Look from Motion VFX. In the inspector, I will open the preset library and check the different presets available. I will select the joint preset. 
In the inspector, we'll modify a little bit the intensity of the lens flare. To conclude with this effect, I will add some fire sounds. You can mix several sounds at the same time to add more strength and variation. and it's done. As you've seen during this tutorial, I'm using a lot the cup on clips. It's very useful to simplify your timeline and divide your work in several steps. It is also very useful when you want to modify some elements. For example, if I want to change my background layer, at any time I can come back to the Compound Clip Smart Collection, double click on my background Compound Clip, then add a new footage and replace the top one. I will see the result in one click. Also, if I want to modify the texture of my title, I can open my text alpha compound clip and adjust the texture. Again, in one clip, I'm back with the final effect. I can reactivate my background layer element as you can see, it's a huge time saver. I hope this tutorial gave you some tips and tricks concerning the use of stock footage. Don't forget to check out the compositing elements available at motionvfx.com. And if you want more tutorials, check out the MotionVFX YouTube channel. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.